Hello, and thank you for joining me on the Disclosure Fest Foundation's weekly global live stream. This is our special event for today, 4-4. I'm your host, Michelle Anderson of Awakening Code Radio, and I'm excited to begin today's The Every Elder Initiative is our newest initiative. And this brings much needed movement and music and healing modalities to our elders living in convalescent homes. The Beach and River Cleanup Initiative has cleaned up over 20,000 pounds of trash. And the Starseed Initiative brings incredible plant-based meals and inspiring conscious activities like yoga, meditation, Jedi basketball to children's schools and children's programs. And you probably are. Sure. It sounds like we had a little bit of technical difficulty in the beginning. We didn't have sound. Can everyone hear me now? Thumbs up. Okay. Well, thank you for joining me here. I'm Michelle Anderson, and I'm your host of today's Disclosure Fest Foundation's weekly global live stream. This is our special event for 4-4, and I'm really excited to welcome Tina Calderon, our Tongva elder from the lands where Disclosure Fest mass meditation happens every year on the summer solstice at Los Angeles State Historic Park. And we also have Nikolani Young, our Hawaiian Kumu, who is with us today. They're gonna to be starting us off. And like they've taught me, they always start with prayer and their songs are prayers. And they'll be telling and sharing a little bit about their cultures. They are a part of our Disclosure Fest Foundation uh, Mass Meditation Initiative. And we also have other initiatives. I don't know if you heard me earlier when I was talking about our other initiatives, the Feed Our Souls Initiative, which is which has fed a thousand houseless people in Los, the Los Angeles area, the Clean Air Initiative, which has planted 21,000 trees to date, the Every Elder Initiative, which includes all of our elders that are that are housed in convalescent homes and gives them just an ear and support movement and lots of crafting projects a lot of sound healing too and the beach and river cleanup initiative which has cleaned up over 20,000 pounds of trash i think you might have heard me talk about the starseed initiative as well and so we are getting ready to go straight over to tina calderon and Nikolani Young. I invite you to come in and pray with us and meditate with us today. This is a very pivotal time on earth. And we know that our love is what is going to help see us through these unprecedented times. It's our love and our community and being in our hearts and sharing together in a calm and compassionate state. So Nikolani and Tina, are you with us? Thank you so much. Thank you for joining with us and sharing your beautiful prayers and songs. 
I'm going to let you take it over now. And um, I just look forward to joining in with everybody who's here. Thank you to everybody who's joined with us to set our hearts in the same unified field. Hello, my beautiful relatives. My name is Tina Calderon. I am Gabrielino Tongva and Ventureño Chumash from the ancestral village of Comicrangna, which is located in the Santa Monica Mountains in the shared territory of the Tongva and the Chumash. I'm happy you are all here with us this good day. I was asked to start this uh, special prayer session off in a good way and with prayer. And I realized that we all come from different backgrounds and cultures and we all have different ways of praying. So I invite you to pray and give your good thoughts in your own way as you were taught, just so that we can bring our collective energies together. And um, let's begin with expressing our gratitude and our love for our creator above. Let his white light shine and guide into our hearts so that we can give love out to the universe and positive energies and positive prayers. I express my gratitude to creator at this time. And I just receive his loving energy. We like to honor the ancestors as well. Those that came before us, that paved the way. And I'm also going to offer prayers to the four directions. Um, we start in the north, we call it Tome, and it's where the sacred waters come from and therefore where life begins. It's designated to the babies and those that have yet to enter our realm. And it's represented by the bear and the eagle, both who teach us how to care for our young. And we turn to the east, we call Komi, where the sun rises and new growth is encouraged. This area is designated to the youth, the future leaders of our countries, the future leaders of tomorrow. It's represented by the deer and the hawk, and both of those relatives teach us about reciprocity. And to the south, we call Kataime, where the ancient knowledge is housed. This is designated to the middle age, those who are in power right now, and who have caused a lot of damage. We pray that they open their minds and their hearts to change. This area is represented by the owl and the snake. And the snake who always has her belly upon our earth mother, feeling her very pulse. We look to them. They teach us. Those relatives teach us about responsibility. And to the West, we call Paime. We believe that that's where our spirits go when we cross over into spirit world. This area is designated to our elders, those whose wisdom we cherish and we respect. This area is represented by the dolphin and the raven, both who teach us about commitment. And then we go through the West Gates into the heavens we call Tokupar. We return to our creator and to the ancestors that reside above, those who lead us, those who guide us when we listen with open hearts and minds. We ask them to show us the next steps to help to heal all of creation, to repair the damage that's been done to unlearn those ways that somehow got twisted and to relearn the original teachings that were given to us. And as we center ourselves back here to our own center of the universe, where each of us are physically located, 
we give our gratitude to our Earth Mother who continues to sustain us. And if I may, I would like to offer a prayer song and then I'll switch over to my sister Mikalani. The holes do not cupangar or wish me no trade. The hotoneha, a weshkoneha, a rura mahe, one in the hoven Mahalo, sister Tina. Mahalo, Tongva ancestors and the people of the lands. Mahalo for allowing me, Miki Lani Young, from the West, from Hawaii, from our sacred mountain, Mauna Awakea. So I wanted to set the scene. When we come to, in order for us as a, as a person from Hawaii and raised in our traditions, in order for healing and unity to happen, we remember that when we leave our lands and we go to another land, we always come in a good way. And so because we are small islands coming from the West, we would voyage. We were voyagers, we were navigators, we were seafarers. And when we, see, when we did do our voyages, we came with gifts, ho'okupus, whether they were medicines, food, our traditions, our songs. So I'm gonna do a prayer, a chant that actually I'm gonna do two. I'm gonna because because for us songs are our gifts. They are medicine. And so anytime I walk into a space of the First Nations people, because I am a guest on these lands called Turtle Island, imagine we're paddling out on our Hokulea, traveling, and we arrive on the beach shores of Tangva land. And there we would be greeted by the people of the land. Now the people of the land don't know us. And as we are coming from our canoes, our va'as, we already start our chants. And yes, it is a different language. But the one thing about us we knew, we knew the tones of one another's voices. We were so connected as a people to understand just in a tone, we knew how a person was approaching their lands. And so I'm gonna offer this first one as a way of saying, we're coming in a good way. We're coming to your lands and we ask if it's okay for us to come and approach. Oh, wahiti e hokupa'ai. Oh, e ua hiti e hele e kava ai ke kai e ho kele va ala i no e a o he a pulu va anui e. Oh, e ua hiti e e la ho e mai i kava ai ke ka i ka ho e i ka ho e i ke ka e pai atu i. Aina la e pai mai la ika aina e awe uahiti e. So at this point, we would get off of our vaas, our canoes. We will have all of our gifts, our kupus, 
And so that was the first gift, was our chant, was our prayer. Asking the same way you would approach someone's home, you knock on the door. So we would bring our sauce, our tea leaves, our medicines, our food. And when my sister Tina at the moment, our gifts in a good way. Once we did that, we would exchange a forehead and our nose to say, we want to take in your breath, take in your breath, that we come in a good way. This is how we could sense the essence of the person that we're taking in. And once that was completed, we would do another chant. And I'm going to offer one more, but I would like to offer it from our sacred mountain, which we would exchange dances and songs. So here we go. And this chant is talking about our sacred mountain, Mauna Awakea, because we are talking about healing. And the healing starts first with us, with our own ancestors. And then how do we come in a good way? So we're going to offer the sacred chant from Mauna Awakea, which talks about our sky father, our earth mother, our star mother, and then the first people. Oh, ha no, come on, ha kea. Oh, poo, a come on, ha kea. Oh, ha no, come on, kea. Oh, ha no, come on, ha kea. Oh, poo, a come on, ha kea. Oh, a kea, ke cane, oh, papa. Oh, a kea, ke cane, oh, papa. Valinu kavahine o akea ke kane o papa o akea ke kane o papa valinu kavahine ana ho ku hevahine ana o ho o ho ku hevahine ana o haloa he ali Hana ho ku heva hine, hana o ho o ho ku heva hine, hana o haloa he ali. Hana o ka mauna kea, hana o ka mauna ha kea, e ke ki mauna ha kea. Hana o ka mauna kea. Hana o ka mauna ha kea, ke ke ki mauna ha kea. E o wa kea. So we also, what we did is we offered our genealogies, not only sky father and earth mother and star mother. We just told the people that we are approaching in this instance, it's the Tongva nation, where we come from, what lands we come from, what waters we come from, what mountains we come from, what traditions we come from, and that we come away. So mahalo, sister, for allowing all of us, allowing all of us to come onto your lands, to come in a good way. And I truly, as us, not myself, only our people know that when we come in a good way, to knowing who the First Nations people of each land is across the world, that is a way to heal. That is a way to heal. So we send prayers out to not just Tongva Nation, but we send out our prayers out to all of Turtle Island, Mokuhonu, from Canada to AKA America to Mexico to Asia, Africa, Middle East, Europe, Polynesia, North and Southern Hemispheres, Western and East Hemispheres. We mahalo you for allowing us to be here so that we can have ceremony here on your land. So mahalo and sister, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Thank you, sister. And thank you also for uniting the people everywhere you go, for spreading the message of love, unity, and for ad adhering to the protocols that were set forth in the beginning. So thank you so much. And we offer Mahalo. prayers at this time also for Mauna Kea, our sacred mother there in Hawaii. Mahalo, sister. So I wanted to share a story. Um, it's a story about a kutek. 
And it, it started long, long ago after Creator made our universe, the earth and the planet relatives, all those were made. And he began creating the insects and the animal people. In those days, the animals were different since some of them were very, very large and others could actually talk. And it was a good time, but Creator needed someone who could live amongst the plant life and let him know how they felt, like truly felt deep inside and if the elements were happy and healthy. So he created a kutet. He told her that she would have the ability to communicate with the plant life and all the elements, but she would have a very short lifespan so that she could come back and report to him how things were here. Her life would begin and be in phases so that she could first intersect with the soils and then the lower levels of plant life that grew just short upon the soils. And then she'd go through metamorphosis and she'd emerge with wings so that she could interact with the trees and the airs in the higher elevations. And over the centuries, Creator made a kutet even more brighter and beautiful colors. And he just loved every single version. So her offspring would continue in these different forms and different varieties. And during this time, Creator made many other animal species, including us humans. It didn't take long though for the humans to control and change everything on earth. And through the times as a Kutet would come and go and she would see all these various changes, she began to be a little fearful. And in the 18th century, things really changed drastically. In such a sh relatively short time, the air quality was beginning to change and the plants and the waters were beginning to feel it. After many lifespans, Akutet started to beg the creator not to send her back to earth. And this saddened creator. It saddened him greatly because he had a lot of love for Akutet as he did for all of creation. So one day when Akutet was ready to begin her new journey to the earth, creator sat down with her and he asked her, why was she so fearful? So she told him what was happening on earth, how things were beginning to change and how the plant life and the animal life were beginning to suffer. And even the human life would suffer, but they don't know it yet. She didn't understand exactly what was happening, but she heard certain words that she didn't understand, things like progress, capitalism, and power. And she feared the look in the eyes of the humans. Creator suddenly understood fully what she was talking about. And he decided that he had to let things play out the way they would, because one day things would change. Solutions would, be, would come and things would change and things would become better, but he had to allow what was gonna happen to happen. So his solution was to allow a kutet and her species to continue to live in their short life cycles, to enjoy life the way they should. But he took away their ability to feel so deeply so that they could live their lives without fear. So here we are today in a climate crisis, our waters, many of them poisoned, our air is unclean, and many people are living selfish lifestyles of convenience, but also of lots of waste. So I have to wonder if this pandemic we're experiencing now is here to force us to change our destructive ways. With hundreds of thousands of good hearted people that are coming together, just like all of you, and we're holding massive prayers, meditation, circles around the world of love and hope, I feel good about it. 
I feel good that our youth is stepping up, that they're going to make the changes that need to be changed, that they will be soon replacing the greedy ones in power, and they will be in charge of making our earth whole again, healthy again. This will help the seven generations to come. So again, at this time, I would just like to send my love and light and I ask you to join me to send this out to the whole universe. Let's pray for healing and positive change. Let's just take in a deep breath, connect to creator and send it down into our earth mother. Let's share this energy of love and gratitude because I have hope that everybody that's joining in here will help to make a difference. And I have hope that healing will begin. It starts with us and we send it out to the whole universe. So I'm gonna offer another song and this is um, our Mother Earth song. in Tongva is a way that we say I'm happy and it's also a way that we express gratitude. So it's thanking her for the food, the water, the air, everything that she provides for us to survive. And so I offer gratitude at this time. And I also invite my sister Mikanani to come back on and share. Aloha. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, Tina and Michelani. I'm I'm staying very present to what you're about to share again. Thank you. Well, I just want to actually share a few more um a few more prayers. Um one of these prayers is healing for our earth. And again, um, but before I go into that, actually, I wanted to share that like my sister Tina, I'm going to set up in the beginning, you know, and I believe our traditions are the way that is going to heal our world because it's the type of relationship we had at one time. It's the type of relationship we had at one time. And I'm going to take you, let's go back to Hawaii. We're not talking about the Hawaii you see right now. We're talking about the Hawaii that once was. Imagine each island, we called each section of the island, we would take each section of the island and call it an ahupua'a. So let's take you to the island of Hawaii Island. Some of you know it as the big island, but in order to give the power, the correct power to an island, you need to call it not only island and waters and mountains, the names of its name, what it once was. Sorry, I'm going to back up a little bit. So I'm going to say thank you to, again, my sister Tina of the Tongva Nation because their mountain told me. And I went to an elder, another elder, and asked if it was okay that I said that. And she said, yes, and the name of that mountain is called Harakmakna. I will say AKA because 
I'm saying so that people only recognize the Western name, but to give it its true power is to give its name back to what it once was. So Parakumakna has really healed me through so many things. And every time I would go to that sacred mountain, I would go there, I would, before I even entered, I would pray. Living here on Turtle Island, on Tongva lands and Tatavium lands, I learned that I could use my tradition in a good way to heal. And I was raised in my traditions since I was a little girl. My songs, my chants, my dances, and realizing that my dances and my chants aren't for people to be entertained. I've always felt that it's always been prayerful. But of course, we all go through the motions and we learn these things. So going to Harakmakna reminded me that as long as I go in a good way, and what does that mean to come in a good way? So I'm going to give you an example of what I did, and I am going to take us back to Hawaii. And it is because of my tradition, the process of my change of my own personal healing from within out. And I'm talking about our na'au, our spiritual healing. So I would go to the mountain and I never thought I would ever make it up a mountain like that. And so I would go to the mountain, I would bring my medicine, my offering, which would be, which is Hawaiian salt. And again, it's my people's medicine, and I'm going to say my people's medicine, because we're going to go back to where it comes from and who takes care of it. That's why I'm saying mine. So I would go to that base of that mountain, and again, it is someone's home. As I approach that mountain, Harakamakna, I would have my Hawaiian salt, but I was also taught by my family, my Ohana, the Tongva people, and Tataviam, and Chumash, and the list goes on, Kumia, giving shout out to them. Some people use tobacco. Some of them use tobacco as offerings. So I would bring my salt and my tobacco. I would say my prayers to ask permission to come into this place, into this very sacred space. And as I did that, I would lay my, as, as I would do my chant, no ho anate akua ikana hele hele ia la ia e he ki o huo hue kaua koko. Ehe na kino malui kalani malue ho e ehe ho ulu mai ana ola kai kono mau kahu o ma kono ma kono ma kono no ho ana ke aku ai kana hele hele ia la ia e he ki o huo hue kaua koko ehe na kino malui kalani malue ho e. Ehe ho ulumaya na ulaka ikona mau kahu. O ma kono ma kono ma kono mai. No ho anake aku ai kana hele hele ia la ia e ke ki o huo hue kau a koko. Ehe na kino malui kalani malue ho e. Ehe ho ulumaya na ulaka ikona mau kahu. O ma kono ma kono ma kono mai. That chant was asking permission to go in and enter. And we are so used to seeing human signs. But in ancient traditional ways, we always paid, to, paid attention to signs. And I know many of you understand this. We paid attention to the birds, the way the wind would move, the way the clouds would form the way the earth would move, all of it. And in our na'au, in our spirit, we would know it was time. So for me, I like to do three. That's my number. I do it three times. The same way when we knock on a door. And when we knock on that door, the person we're knocking on for, maybe have not heard it. We'll do it again. And by the third time we knock, boom, the door opens sometimes if they're home. So for me, I wait, and I wait for three signs. And when those three signs appear, then I drop my salt, I drop the tobacco, and then I say, I do my another chant for them and say, Ooh, 
samahalo wala kuwa ike alohala kuka iya kahalo wala pave himai na lehua mai kaho o ku iya kahala vaila Mahalo he na kuwa, mahalo he na kupuna la ea, mahalo me ke aloha la, mahalo me ke aloha la. And then I would enter. And I say these things because if you notice, every time I led into a prayer, as we would traverse that mountain, I would traverse that mountain every time she would heal me and I would do other chants as I'm going up. We were very strong and mighty people and we're still strong and mighty people. We just need to remember that. And as I would go up, I would lay my prayers for my sacred mountain, Maunawakea, for Harakamakna, for the Tongva nation, for all nations across the world, for all people. And when I was done, I would sit and eat with her. And then I would chant all the way back down. This is why I say tradition is going to heal us. So now I'm gonna take us back to Hawaii. So imagine being in Hawaii, where you got people working in the taro patches, our lo'i. You got people working in the ocean. You got people who are gathering medicine. You got basket weavers. You got many people who have many different jobs. But at that time, we didn't think of it as a job. We thought of it as a way how we took care of something that creator, Keakua, Naakua, Nakupuna left us and gave us. So if we were working in a taro patches or fishing, same way how I said how we entered, uh, how I would enter a mountain, Harakmakna, it would be the same way we did at home. On our islands, we were we're into sections called ahu pua'as. And the ahu means an altar. Hmm, what a concept. Ahu meaning altar. The earth is our altar. So if the earth is our altar, shouldn't we be praying every day? But from the moment we wake up till we go to bed? So imagine being on the island and if I was working with the tarot or the medicine, and I'll give an example. When I'm gathering here, I do the exact same thing. I chant, ask my permission to enter a space. Wait for the signs. Walk in. Know that I am walking on that altar. Every day we traverse on these lands. As soon as we wake up, actually even when you're sleeping, you are sleeping on sacred land. So why wouldn't we wake up with a song of prayers and gratefulness and gratitude? So you wake up, you get ready, you're chanting already. You're, you're chanting to them saying, help me for today. Help me to see, help me to gather, help me to gather the food, help me to gather the, the supplies I need for making a basket or clothing or fishing or medicine. Get ready, get out, and then we go out. We would wake up if you were a farmer, depending on what you did in the community, in your ahupua'a, your village.
for our world. So I'm going to leave us with this one again. And, um, and this one is for healing. So I'm going to send target and I talk about intentions. Intentions are so important. Intentions are so important because it's what's inside, which is our ancestral remembrance. Our not all come from our connection to them. And remembering those feelings and remembering that at one time, because we prayed all the time, sang, if it came in a song or a dance, that was all prayer. That we were so connected to those prayers that they became it. So here we go. Kapu kahaloa kuma kapea. Kanuya haloa ulu hahaloa. Okalao haloa ikela opukae. Kapu kahaloa kuma kapea. Kanuya haloa ulu hahaloa. Okalao haloa ikela opukae. Kapu kahaloa kuma kapea. Kanuya haloa ulu hahaloa. Okalao haloa ikela opukae. Kapu kahaloa kuma kapea. Kanuya haloa ulu hahaloa. Okalao haloa ikela opukae. Kapu kahaloa kuma kapea kanuya haloa ulu hahaloa o kala o haloa ike la o pukae kapu kahaloa kuma kapea Kanu ya haloa, ulu ha haloa, o kala o haloa, ike la o pukae. So sending healing thoughts and prayers to all of you. And I'm going to turn this back over to you, Michelle. Wow. Michelani Young and Tina Calderon. Thank you, thank you, thank you for putting us in the space of sacredness. We know that these are unprecedented times and for many people, they're feeling a little bit uneasy. And what I have come to learn is that the indigenous cultures are bringing us back to that remembering that we're one human family and that prayer is so important. That's why we've invited all of you today who are watching us live or who may catch the live stream. This is what Disclosure Fest Foundation's all about, getting us all together and becoming a united force field of light to bring peaceful waves, calm the collective. It's so important that we all stay in our heart space right now. And Disclosure Fest has been doing that with the mass meditation initiatives for the last four years. And we are planning on going ahead on June 20th at Los Angeles State Historic Park. They've asked us to continue to, to stay steady and to bring everybody to this festival in person because we really feel that we are parting the waves now and we will get through this and we invite you to all join with us on June 20th. Now it looks like I have Jose Munoz here. He is our Mayan day keeper and he has been tireless in his efforts of bringing unity, peace and love all across the globe. And I'm really honored and privileged to have Jose Come on and join with us again. Mahalo Nui Loa, Michelani Young, and Mahalo. Tina Calderon for sharing your beautiful stories, culture, and prayers, and songs with us. Jose, you're ready with the Mayan calendar and you're starting a fire for us? Total ceremony. I'm so excited. Yeah, we are um, at the um, Mayan calendar. Dreamcatcher Manifestation Station number one in downtown Los Angeles. There's nine of them in the U.S. for now. And we are going to uh, set uh, our fire, our sacred fire on the sacred day of the crocodile, Imosh, Imish, 
Uh, this is a prayer that we are going to do from now on every day at 6 20 a.m and uh, the prayer is for all the uh brothers and sisters around the world to remember that there's a uh, current global crisis that we have going on will be over completely by june 20th Yeah, that's the time. <laughs> yeah, the time fell off the sky literally. <laughs> so I wanna, I, I wanna say that again with my heart to your heart. This is a prayer for happiness, a prayer for health, your mental, physical, and spiritual health. This is the first of the fires every day at six twenty a.m. At the Temple of the Jaguars, at the Mayan Calendar Dreamcatcher Manifestation Station number one in downtown Los Angeles. This is a prayer from the Mayan tribes to the human tribes. We're all Mayab, we're all people. We're all indigenous to this planet, and in that sense, this is a prayer from us to us. Mother Earth, our elders, our children, for the past 
Share balance, share unity, share peace, share harmony. This, my brothers and sisters, is going to be lit every day. Jose, that that fire and the music and the prayers in your heart are really, really bringing us into our heart center. And I appreciate being a part of your ceremony and that you're bringing us all into the sacred ways of the Maya. The fire helping to cleanse and purify. And it feels so good to really feel the balance between Nina and Michelani and you, Jose, bringing the feminine and the masculine, the waters, the fire, the earth and the wind and all the elements, the harmony and balance. We appreciate you so much. 
And thank you to all of you who are joining with us today and really igniting the ceremonies in each one of your souls. We are all one human family and these star ancestors are leading us back into the original teachings, the original teachings on earth, the indigenous ways that many of us have forgotten and are beginning to remember again. And that's why these ceremonies are so important during this time. Jose had introduced us the other night. We had a, a Zoom call to talk about how we were going to facilitate this star ancestor space today. And Jose brought in his sister, a Mayan priestess, Shuni Giron. And she was with us at Disclosure Fest Mass Meditation last year in Los Angeles. And when she came on, she felt the resonance of what we are co-creating here with each one of you who are watching us today. And she wanted to give an offering herself. And it feels really good to have this balance of the masculine and the feminine weaving in harmony together and bringing about this peaceful field that we really are creating this cohesive container of divine love and unity and peace and healing for the collective of humanity for, for our species to continue on its evolutionary path. And so we invite Shuni on. She is going to be calling in the 20 Mayan energies with us here. Jose, do you want to give a little bit of a, can you give an introduction to Shuni? I see your hand. <laughs> thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, thank you. Oh, yeah. I'm just very grateful for the opportunity to pray together and climbing out today that the universe has a better idea of how to do the things we want to do. And I'm very grateful for that opportunity to remain in humble service. In that way, I want to say thank you, everyone, for coming to our sacred fire. And it's going to continue to be on until 10 p.m. tonight. And also every day at 6.20 a.m. from now on. And in that sense, we help this prayer be filled by love, by humbleness, and by understanding that we are but a grain of sand in the beaches of the universe. But we can get together. And just like drops of water and rain, we can form the power of force of water, carrying knowledge everywhere. Thank you, Nanishini, for coming in and... Thank you, Jose. Matios. And Shuni is ready before she goes on to her live broadcast. She's going to be calling in the 20 Mayan energies. Thank you again, Jose. Shuni, are you there? I saw you peek in a minute yeah. ago. Can you hear me? Okay, you hear there, me? You, there you are. Yes, thank you for joining with can us. Last minute, we can hear you, yes. And you can hear me and you can see me? Yes, we can hear you and we can see you. Thank you. So thank you, everyone. 
It is an honor for me to be here sharing the Mayan energies. What I am going to do, I'm going to do a Mayan prayer. I'm going to call in the 20 sacred Mayan energies that are in our sacred body. I'm going to call each one for all our hearts, for all humanity. Because 20 energy, a complete human being that is complete with his 20 powers of consciousness and awareness. So take a minute to breathe with me, connect with the sacred energies, connect with your sacred heart, connect with your sacred creator and former. We thank you, Grandmother. We thank this one 13 in Mosh today. We call upon the energy of Ahana Walimosh, spirit of the waters. We call upon the sacred waters of life. I call upon the sacred waters in our bodies. I call upon the transparency of each one of us, the fluidity of the waters. I thank the rivers. I thank the cascades. I thank the oceans, the spring waters. I call upon water of life. And I think Ahau Nawalimosh. Maltiosh Nahau, Ahau Nawalimosh. I call upon the energy of Ahau Nawal I. The wind that we breathe, the power of the mind, the fluidity of the spirit, breath of life. I ask Ahau Nawal I for the wind to change. For the purity of the mind and the spirit of all human beings, I thank Ahaunawal I. I call upon the energy of Ahaunawal Akabal, the night. I call away to the light. I call to balance it. I call upon the spirit of a Hauna Wildcat to allow each one of us. Shuni, Shuni, I am so sorry to come in. We, Shuni, we're having technical difficulties yes. with your connection. And where it's 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 uh really glitching on your end on your connection so i'm not sure your wi-fi is strong enough right now um i wanted to hear all of the sacred energies that you're calling in but it doesn't sound like your connection is strong enough to support so can uh, i record for you and send it to you yeah, why don't you record it and we'll, we'll edit this video at the end. And when people want to come back on, we can, um, ha we can probably edit that in. I think Neil will probably be able to do that for us. But for but now, I think it, well, if I, we're, we can't, we can't, yeah, okay, we if can't I can do a recording. Um, okay, you just so send it. We're, we're we're gonna have to cut your camera now because we're having such technical difficulties hearing you. Okay, go ahead. So we'll, thank you so much for joining with us, Shuni. We I feel the energy of what you're doing, and thank you for co-creating with us and for doing what you're doing. I'm hoping Jose can come back on and talk a little bit about the sacred fire that you're doing. Um, that you'll be doing after this broadcast, because I know you had to be off uh, by about 3.30. So, Jose, are you with us? Thank, thank you. you. Thank you again, Shuni. Okay, well, we're trying to get, we're trying to get Jose back on. Sorry about the technical difficulties. One of the things that I really felt was happening during this time on this 4-4 gateway, this Stargate, um, I had gotten 
I had gotten information in my own body about a year ago to do something called honoring the galactic goddess on this particular day, 4-4-2020, which is a 444 date. And Shuni felt so aligned with that balance of feminine and masculine energy. And we we felt like we really wanted to put her on and balance that. And Jose, we thank you for coming back on with the sacred fire. And thank you for introducing us to, to the Mayan priestess Shuni. Can you tell our audience what you guys are doing later on? You're having a sacred fire later on today as well, correct? Yeah, we have in uh, uh, 20 ceremonial sites around the world with the same prayer that I said earlier, uh, curving the global crisis. These uh, 20 timekeepers from around the world, they're uh, impact makers that we have come. This is the first time we come together in 52 years. Wow. So. This is the fire that um, I dedicated to this uh, Displosion Fest existence, but also it transcends, it transmutes into the next event. And other than that, if I may, I'd like to continue the reciting of the uh, ancestral novels with Nana Shuni started. That, that sounds fabulous. We have a few more minutes before Chief Phil Lane will be joining us at 3.15. Beautiful. Let's, let's keep going. So Jose. you guys tell the timekeepers. I think I think we have exactly eight minutes and twelve seconds. So here we go. Sacred. We call upon the ancestors of the Ikhakal, the owls of the universe, to bring light to the darkness that people are finding in panic and fear. We call upon the ancestors, cat, the lizard. We call upon her and him to keep weaving dreams of splendor. Keep weaving dreams, carrying our baskets of dreams to the universe where we find clean air, clean water, and clean food for everyone. We call upon the sacred ancestors of Kang, cat. Can cat the snake, the serpent will bring us all remembering the energy that goes through us. We call upon all the ancestors of Kame, our transformers, our sacred ones who show us the way into the spiritual world. We call upon the sacred ancestors of Kek, the deer. Protecting the jungles, protecting the deserts, protecting the forests of Mother Earth. We call upon the ancestors of Camille. Camille, the ancestors, travelers of space and time throughout the universe, who will guide us all to open our hearts and minds and spirits, to open our hands to receive the abundance of the universe coming through us in sacred portal of April 4, 2020. We call upon the sacred ancestors of Pach to heal our sacred fire, where we bring all of our afflictions and our fears. It is the sacred fire, our Mayan hospital, that will breathe in the sacred air into our lungs, the respiratory system to keep us healthy. We call upon the ancestors of Chi, the dog, loyalty, and justice for all. We ask for it. It's here now. Now we need to adapt to it, the new world that we're living in. We call upon the ancestors of Ev, the shining path that we walk on. And we remember that all we need to do to get what we want, what we need, and what we must have is to smile. We can practice. Come on. <laughs> Call upon the ancestors of authority. Ah, ah, the bell. Let's walk this walk to June twentieth with authority, remembering global crisis is over. 
We call it upon the magicians. The ish of the world. To stay alert like the jaguars. Ish, like us, live fearless but not careless. We call upon the ancestors of the eagles, chicken, to help us see from the top, to help us see through everybody's eyes, to have compassion for everyone. No matter what part of the journey they're in, we must show compassion. We must show respect. Like the eagles. We also count upon our sacred ancestors of Akhmak theme. Akhmak the condors. We call upon you ancestors to help us see the future. Help us change our own future. And remember to have the integrity when we do advise and change other people's futures. We call upon the ancestors of Noch Kaban. Noch Kaban is the sacred prayer. More than ever in our existence today, it's extremely important to be mindful of what we say or what we think after the word I am. I am so beautiful. I am. I am so abundant. I am. We call upon the ancestors of the medicine, the black obsidian medicine, our doctors of the villages. We call upon these doctors to embody those who are in the front lines in hospitals across the world, we send our love and compassion to them. For them to remember that when they do sacrifice their lives so others can live on, is not sacrifice, it's service. We thank you, Black Obsidian Doctors of the Universe, for being here with us in sacred ceremony. We call upon Kawak, the storm, to become drizzles of change and gentleness. It becomes the most compassionate rehabilitators of Mother Earth and all our brothers and sisters who are surviving and rehabilitating in this event, through the event and after the event. We need the ancestors of Kawak, the storm be compassionate. We become the ones who can and comfort each other. And finally, we call the ancestors of the past, the present, and the future from all multi-realities and multi-universe. One Akpu, two Akpu, three Akpu, Four Akpu, five Akpu, six Akpu, seven Akpu, eight Akpu, nine Akpu, ten Akpu, eleven Akpu, twelve Akpu, thirteen Akpu. It is the certainty that comes through this now world that allows me to share with love and gratitude that this global crisis is over, June 20th. It is with certainty of the Akfu, the master adapters of the world, that anyone who watches this video and hears this message with their heart, who hears this message with their eyes, will be able not just to survive, but thrive after the event. Thank you. But Josh, brothers and sisters, Looking Thank forward you. to hear from Uncle Phil. Thank you. Thank you, Jose. Thank you for continuing the ceremony with us. And we apologize for the glitches earlier. We're trying to tap dance a little bit here, but we are really excited to welcome Chief 
Phil Lane of the Dakota and Chickasaw Nations. And I met Chief Phil and Jose both at the same time in Sedona, Arizona. Who knew back then that we would be co-creating this Star Ancestor Space at Disclosure Fest Mass Meditation Initiative. And we have Chief Phil here with us on this live stream today. He is all over the place. He's also going to be on Unify's live stream. I think his time is at 7.45 tonight. Chief Phil, it is my honor to bring you on. Thank you for joining with us. And I don't know if you were able to see Tina Calderon and Michelani Young and Jose, our brother Jose Munoz and Shuni yeah. Giron, but we're all co-creating this together. And this was your title for this live stream, remembering we are one human family. Thank you for being with us, Chief Phil. Yes, well, you know, sister, it's so, so nice to, wonderful to be with you. And and also, you know, Brother Jose has played such a pivotal role at different times in my life when, you know, very key things were unfolding and I call him and he's right on time every time. And so we're really, really gifted to have him there. And, and I'm just, uh, uh, um, getting to know uh, Tina, I'm just going to know Tina, I enjoyed very much, and also Michelani. And so I'll get a chance to know them more, and I'm, I'm glad we'll be able to re record that. Sometimes these these uh, these little internet things are are uh, challenging, but we can always get around them. So yes. appreciate. It. Well, you know, sister, <clears throat> I've been reflecting on this sacred day because for for 2020 astronomically in terms of the spiritual sense of this day, in terms of what Brother Jose has revealed about this day. And in numerology, this day is four, four, four. Four, four, four. So this is a day for the beginnings of new initiatives empowered by a vision that transcends this material world as we know it to a world that's founded in exact uh, title of this presentation is sharing. Remember, we're all members of one human family. We came from the same sacred seed and just like the baby in the mother's womb goes through all kinds of different forms. And at one point, if you're not a trained physician, you can't tell the difference between a human fetus and a pig fetus, I might have been told. But yet, from that microscopic beginning in the, in the very seed that's been within us from the beginning of time, we emerge into humans that we are. We have always been human beings. And wherever that goes to, because, um, you know, when we close and really close our eyes and go deep within ourselves, there's a place that goes on forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And we know scientifically that this universe we live in is infinite, is infinite. So if that's the case, how much more? infinite are the spiritual worlds beyond. They're limitless. We are limitless. Each of us is a sovereignty, ancient and perishable and everlasting. If we follow that first counsel, let us possess a pure, kindly and radiant heart. So uh, this is a time of, of this new beginning. And of course, I think that that before I go on here, uh, and I, I was so you know thankful our sister came and the first thing she did, which was a proper protocol, and that was to honor on whose land we're standing. I mean, that's a proper protocol we've always done. That's part of our code of ethics to respect and honor everybody's space, whether it's personal space, whether it's family space with collective space with national space however space it is is to 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 is to 
to really honor that space. And so I think that it's appropriate on this beautiful day in my old 75 winter way. <laughs> you gotta know in 75 winters, you know, your, your, um, your mind sometimes doesn't quite function uh, as much as, as, as good as it used to, but that gives more room to get out of the way so the spirit can work. That's what I'm finding. Is one of the, really is this, we get out of the way, let the spirit work. That's when something happens. So I'd like to just share this prayer, if I may, sister, with all our beloved relatives. Mitakiapi, my beloved relatives of our human family. I'm so thankful we're here, and I pray that you're standing in strength, no matter what tests and difficulties come in your way. We were born for this day. We were born for this day that shall not be followed by night. O Tenkashlavakantaka, creator of all good things, most beloved one, all powerful one, most kind one, most compassionate one, ever forgiving one, ever abiding one, ever uniting one, most humble one. We call upon all our relatives in the spiritual worlds beyond and around to join us at this time, to join us as we as a human family transcend into our spiritual adulthood through this great time and turbulence of our teenage years, so to speak. We ask those beloved ones, we call on from the beginning of time that they'd be with us at this time in a good way. And to Kashi, we call upon all those tribes today to the east from where comes the red sunrise, from where comes the red horse. We call upon all those tribes and nations to come together in unity and harmony. The Wakantaka, creator of all good things, great spirit, we call upon the black horse, all the tribes and nations of the West. Of the, excuse me. To Kashi, we call upon, <laughs> that's what I told you about, being 75 winners. <laughs> that's okay. So we go, we're going from east to the south. Odin Kash, we call upon all those tribes and nations of the south from where comes the high noon, where everything's kind of yellow or pale. From where comes the yellow or pale horse, we call upon those sacred powers to come together in unity and harmony. And while Kantaka, creator of the universe, we call upon all those tribes and nations of the west from where comes thunder, lightning, and rain. And from where comes the black horse, and we call upon all those tribes and nations to come together in unity and peace and harmony. And to God shall call upon those tribes and nations of the north. From where comes the white snow, to where the white giant lives, the purifying north winds, and the white horse. We call upon all those tribes and nations that they may come together in unity and harmony. In honor of our Father Sky, we ask forgiveness, Creator, for, for us, his men, for the masculine in elements of life, for the awkward ways we walk this path, but we give thanksgiving for our beloved Mother Earth, and the day has come for the rising of the source of all creation, the feminine spirit of life, arising within each and every one of us, arising in each and every, every dimension of this life along with the emergence of the seventh generation. For this, we give thanksgiving with all our hearts and souls. We ask that we might enter into this upcoming healing and wellness ceremony that will begin on the 8th of April until the 22nd of May that we might join our hearts and minds together during this time for those relatives who truly want to come together and share all the teachings and learnings that we can and transform ourselves physically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, and also develop our collective vision of where we step to in this day. It shall not be followed by night. And we give thanksgiving again. For Disclosure Fest and this good work that's done, my sister. Thank you, Sister Michelle, Brother Adrian, and all that are joining us in this. How me talk, Yasi, 
So I just want to close up by saying, we, in our Dakota way, we say our name. My name is Shukmano. I have another name, Chinupasapa. And I stand responsible before the Creator for my words and my actions, both. No one can condition anybody else's soul but themselves. So what we say and what we do, you know, my sister taught me that lesson. I have good, my sister always teaches me great lessons, my sister Gloria. And so it'll be a year this next weekend on this very day that I, I rode this horse. And I was going to ride a horse because my dad rode till, till he's in his, in his 80s. And so I thought, well, I'm 75. I can ride a horse. But what I didn't remember in my arrogance, <laughs> in a certain way, I mean, this idea, you know, because sometimes we not really have to take stock of where you're at. And so I'm not uh, like I used to ride in my young days. So yeah, anyway, and I hadn't been on a horse for about 30 years. So I got on this on horse and I got on, as soon as I got on, I realized those stirrups were way too long. And you know, when you go into that trot, you've got to have your, you got to have your legs have, you know, so you can just move with that horse like that. So anyway, and so I said, can you can you shorten these stirrups up? And of course, what had happened was they had picked a location for us to do this really quite an elaborate thing with, you know, these, this vehicle goes beside you and as you're riding the horse, it makes picture of you going all that. And when they went there, this place was deserted. They didn't realize on the Saturday we choose to, 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 to shoot, it became a dirt bike and related other vehicle paradise. So horses were spooked. He wanted to get forward. He said, well, I can't shorten your stirrups. Well, I knew better. I knew he could have shortened shortened stirrups. But I wanted to get, I wanted to ride that horse. I wanted to be like my dad, really. And I wanted to also demonstrate, you know, just because we're old, we can still ride. Well, you know, I took off. And I'll tell you what, I hit that doggone saddle at that trot. And I mean, I went off that saddle. And I'll tell you, when I hit that saddle back down, I thought my back, I mean, I thought I was dead right there. I mean, paralyzed. I mean, not dead yet. But by the time I fell off the horse, but I kept on going. I knew I had to get through to that gallop. And I got to the gallop, of course, then I didn't want to stop. Well, anyway, I did stop and I got off and I noticed I went back. Or anyway, so anyway, I really, really, really damaged my back, which resulted in a back operation and all that stuff. And so after that, I was telling my sister, I was saying to my sister, Deloria, who just really straightens me out when I need to. She said, you know, I said, you know, sister, the creator really humbled me. Kind of like that. The creator really humbled me. She says, come on, Phil. The creator didn't humble you. The creator gave you free will. Gave you free will. You humbled your own self. And then my father's teaching came back to me. He said, son, because I asked him, oh, tell me about humility, Dad. He said, son, when you need to learn more about humility, you will humble yourself. <laughs> and then I understood what he said, you know, so um, that kind of got, got off on that, that, that little side story there. Uh, now you want to you bring me back now. I love your stories. I love your story. <laughs> and you know, one, one of the things that you have always reminded me of is how when we use humor, when we're in ceremony, that we can use humor to change energy and to bring us all back into that, that really joyful place. So I do, I love your stories. And I know that you are here aligning all of us together to remember that we are one human family. And you're, yeah. doing, a, you're doing a lot of work on the planet Right now, I've seen how tireless you are, all of you, Tina and Michelani and Shuni and Jose and you jumping on all these live streams and uniting our human family and helping us to remember that there's no difference between each one of us and that it's actually our job and our responsibility to take these unprecedented times and bring us back into our heart space so that right. we can usher in, as you talk about what the prophecies bring us to is this new golden age that brings us back into a harmonious way of living in balance with the earth. Absolutely. 
And I know that yes. you, you'll you probably be talking about that on some of your other live streams as well. Can you also share with us about your talking circles and what you're doing and, with- You know, uh, sister. Mm -hmm. uh, your camera just, it looks like your camera just um, froze, Chief Phil. I'm wondering, I'm wondering about all these technical little glitches now. So it looks like Chief Phil's camera is frozen. We'll see if he can get back on. If he can jump back in, um, we can continue with his his stories. There you are. <laughs> um, um, there I am. So, sister, if I may, I see that that uh, the time is ticking by. And I know, and I love Jose, brother Jose, because he, he knows that time so particularly. But I want to want to really uh, speak briefly about the Star Ancestors. I want to talk about this uh, healing and wellness ceremony we're, we're launching on the 9th of April in, in partnership with Disclosure Fest, Chief Danchor Foundation, others. But I'll talk about it in a minute. I want to say this. I want to really, really um, send my uh, great heartfelt uh, greetings and also appreciation to my dear cousin, Lauren Zephyr, Golden Light Eagle, Chief Guy Golden Light Eagle. You know, I can remember way, 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 way back before anything about intra, you know, extraterrestrial, intraterrestrial, all of these kind of awarenesses were coming to when he stood up and, and, and began to share this. And of course, you know, you know, anybody who stands up in a community that's been very, very hurt, you know, obviously, uh, you, you, you know, you get a few, you know, I always say, you know, if you get enough arrows uh, in the back and, and bullets in the front, you kind of come become transparent and kind of whiz through. So I know it's not an easy path, you know, to, to carry on this, this trying to understand, the, to better understand our relationship with everything. But I want to share one of our sacred teachings, and I'll just go this far. And, and, it, and I think on this issue of star ancestors, and this is the sacred teaching, correct? Every fixed star, has its fixed planets and every planet its own creatures that no human being can compute. Let me say it one more time. Every fixed star has its fixed planets and every planet its own creatures that no human being can compute. So I want to say put that in there and, and say, so let's open our hearts and minds to everything. If this physical world is limitless, as I said before, how much more limitless is this, are the spiritual worlds? This is limitless. It's our intention, but not only intention, it has to be aligned with principles. And so on April 9th and I'm going to, to just share this if anybody wants to join us. It's simply four worlds circles, four, F-O-U-R, worlds, W-O-R-L-D-S, circles, S-C-I-R-C-L-E-S at gmail.com. And I'm sure my, my good brother, Adrian, who's so digitally, he can just get this taken care of and make that shared. But uh, what, what this, what we realized in, in, in that really this emerged uh, really uh, in, in, in less than a week almost. Uh, because, you know, we, it, there's no question, I mean, we, we, no, I shouldn't say there's a question. I mean, we know we're one human family, okay? So there's no way to build a society except on this understanding of oneness, mm -hmm. all right? Because with that comes the elimination of all prejudice. How can you be prejudiced when we're all one? Anything that calls better than a less than, we're one, one people. And so we're having uh, um, our four rurals talking circle, a digital talking circle leadership program. Now that is, we really uh, understanding financially where people are, you know, we have, you know, those that can share, that's great, or partially share, or share in payments, or if you need a full scholarship, please come on. Because surrounding this 
is an incredible other leadership program. Jose, every day for seven weeks, he's going to give us uh, a reading. We have morning yoga. We have, so whatever you want to plug into, re- because it takes, during that seven weeks, our prayer is we can emerge out of that as a seed crystal, a seed crystal that can then empower the same thing in others. And this is able to happen. We've been working on this for so many years, digitally, effortlessly, because by the time everybody gets through, they'll be able themselves to conduct a talking circle via Zoom or whatever. And I, I think that what really pleases me is when we begin to see the relatives who are, who are giving us a hand on this. So um, along with Disclosure Fest and Four Worlds International Institute, we have the Chief Dan George Foundation. They're stepping in. And uh, my good son, Ruben George, son Dan's Chief Ruben George and his team, they're gonna bring some really great things there. We have Four Worlds Europe. They're, they're contributing from the work they've done there with our model and all the work they've done right in the heart of, of conflicts there between the Rotterdam, between different uh, religious groups. We've got uh, Brother Jose, of course, going to come do the, do the, Maya, uh, the Mayan calendar readings every day. So we can kind of keep track that way. The 13 grandmothers, they'll be, they're behind this. They're, they're part of the sponsors. And then a dear uh, a brother, Pato, and sister Antoinette, Pato Banyan. They have a, they're great, incredible reggae, reggae centers. They're going to, they're going to, uh, I shouldn't say reggae, they can sing anything. But tomorrow they're doing an incredible, we have a program tomorrow on a nuclear free world. And they're going to preview this incredible video. You'll just, you'll enjoy the video. It's like Unify's video came out today. And Unify's in there. Um, um, Sign, Synergize Network. Sign is there, John Raymer, Cooperation Games. And so we're there. And anybody else that wants to join in. So again, um, but we have a little bit, a few more minutes, a couple more minutes. Any last question? Any last thing you'd like me to reflect on or got a corny joke you want to tell me or? <laughs> <laughs> I, I know we have that we have that camaraderie between right. us. I love that. I love that you've stayed at my house and we've been in ceremony together. Yes. And I appreciate that you talked about a little bit about the nuclear. We haven't talked about what's going yes. on with with the decommissioning of the nuclear plant here. There's many areas around the world that are facing their challenges and I really appreciate what you're doing to shed light upon those things, to bring us all back into the space of unity and prayers with each other. And I, I want to thank you, Chief Phil, for mentioning your cousin, Lauren Zephyr, Chief Golden Light Eagle. He's with the Star Knowledge Org um, organization, and he started that 24 years ago, what you were talking about when you yes. shared a little bit about that. He was, he is who I partnered with to put on the Honoring the Galactic Goddess event that was due to be today in Laguna Beach. And we postponed it until August 8th. So there are many events that are going on around the world and you're involved with so many of them. With With this last little bit of time, I would really like you to share about what you did on your journey to Jordan and Palestine and Israel. And and the may peace prevail on earth and the, and the um, united yeah. religious initiatives and what what you did with them and what you yeah. are doing with them. Yes. Well, do we have a so there's a few moments here at the end I can do this. You have a well, actually, it looks like you have a. a let's go about another five minutes. Five minutes. Can we so, do that? Um. Well, I want to say that my father was to say he said. Son, if we can't be happy today, what day are we waiting for? You know, that's, that's, that's uh, I think, the, the part of, of having some humor in our lives. Um, I don't know if I have, in, in five minutes, I can really, but let me just see if I can get to this. On um, the 1st of February, a global circle of religious, spiritual, relatives from every faith you can imagine, Buddhist monks from Thailand, our relatives from across India, from everywhere. Here, indigenous people from here, from Australia, other places, 
we went on a what we called a <coughs> Holy Land Living Water pilgrimage. And it it uh, concluded at Megiddo, where the Battle of Armageddon physically is to take place. We went there to pray there together in a prayer that's never been done before with all these spiritual relatives to end war. Now it's very interesting. And again, uh, um, you know, I, 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 I believe there's no wrong way to play, pray. And I think that this fighting we have going on, whether it's indigenous communities or whatever, is the greatest thing keeping us from coming together. Because we can't come together spiritually and respect one another spiritually, then, you know, we have a big problem if we can't do that. But anyway, so we got up to Megiddo and we all came together in one prayer. And the prayer was about ending war. And um, so we prayed. It was a strong prayer. It's, we're going to share the whole ceremony. You know, again, I said it's never been done before. We're going to share it. The energy was up there. There's already a beautiful uh, uh, Israeli um, news piece on it. Anyway, it was so interesting because uh, we, the way we ended up praying for war didn't happen the last minute. And you'll, when you see the full thing, you'll see we confronted it from two sides. The bookends of both sides of the ceremony were about stopping war. Well, again, now, again, for those that, that you know, as I said, I've, I believe and studied every spiritual writing I can find. So I have no problem, I believe, the source of all these spiritual writings, even though their social teachings are different, are one. I believe that. And so if you, and I believe in these visions that people have, and I also believe that everything has an infinite spiritual meaning. So my interpretation of this may not be, here's very simple. If you go to the book of Revelations, in the very place we were, that we prayed right there about war, is the red horse of war. Now, for, for the Ahantawa, according to my, my uh, grandfather, uh, Vine Deloria Sr., that for us, the red represents the red sunrise that brings a, a everyday remembering peace. So there, the other one is war, peace. Now, it's interesting. From that moment on, there was no more war because who came? The yellow horse. The yellow horse, the same as Black Elk's vision, by the way. You can find these horses exactly, or the pale horse, because it's kind of pale when everything's at high noon. The pale horse came, and that came. That's pestilence. That's virus, disease. That horse rode. Our horse, because we know in peace we have healing, the power to heal. So from peace we had healing. That's our horse that we call that we're calling upon now to, to take care of this horse. Because really, the transformation is simply transforming all the negative to the positive. Let me say that that which is not conducive to us, our further growth into that which is conducive. Then from there, of course, and it's already happening, is the black horse. The black horse is the horse of famine. But for us, it's the horse of prosperity, because if you have peace, you have healing, you have prosperity. And here's where we're at, too. That white horse represents the conqueror. And if at these times, like my father said, at times of crisis, he says, visionary leaders arise. But be sure you know their hearts pure and their minds pure before you follow them. Right. So here's what happens. At this time, either a, a type of a Hitler type, I don't know what you use him, but that type of person will arise and, and that'll cause then a war, another war. The war will cause a pestilence, some more poverty, famine. And then again, that's been going on and on. But now, what is ours? For the white, that's wisdom. That's the wisdom. That's the white snow. That's the white hair we get. But also it's about the circle is completed. It's about harmony. It's about consultation. It's about cooperation. It's about co-development. So we're going to see, you know, let's pray that we don't have to go through another cycle. Let's pray that, that there are going to be some famine here. There's going to be those individuals who are going to come and try to try to use this situation for their own advantage. But I have total faith. It's been prophesied. And as sure as the sun rises every morning, there's no power on heaven or earth that's going to stop the fulfillment of these holy prophecies mm -hmm. because they're in alignment with the will of the creator. 
and will who we are as human beings. So I love you. Thank you. How? I love you too. And thank you so very much for sharing, sharing all your wisdom and your prayers, your stories. It, how does it feel? You're sandwiched between these beautiful feminine women. You've got Brother Jose with you. And now we're, we're going to bring back on Tina Calderon from Beautiful. the Tongva Nation and Michelani Young from, from the Hawaiian Nation. Thank you very much and good hey, luck. We'll join so with you on the Unify live stream when you're on at 745 yes. Pacific time tonight. Yes, we'll see you then. And, and my warm, loving greetings to all on this Thank beautiful, you. beautiful day, 444. Four, four. 444. Four, four. Thank you so much, Chief Bill. I, I'm just so uplifted and inspired to see all of the beautiful hearts that are coming together today all around the world. This is a global day of prayer and meditation as we usher in this peace. And so I am inviting back Tina Calderon of the Tongva Nation and Mikalani Young, our Hawaiian Kumu, to give us some final words and final prayers for, for about the next, what, seven or eight minutes, I guess. Thank you both for coming back. Are your microphones on? Yeah, your mic There you are. Okay, okay, take well, it away, thank ladies. You, thank you. <laughs> this has thank been you. really a very good session, very interesting. Um, for me, I just wanted to say something because this is so different for us of the Tongva tribe or Tongva nation. Um, normally, we don't do things on internet, and we don't. This is just also different. Even Disclosure Fest is very different for us, but. I feel like spirit has called me into this direction and I feel like it's so important for us to participate um, because like Michelani says, you know, I mean, you can't have a prayer ceremony on the lands without the people. And so I am only a vessel to speak to my ancestors and ask for permission. Um, so I do appreciate that you all are following these protocols. I'm going to, Pass it over to Mikalani, and then um, I would like to close with a healing song. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. And thank you for stepping out of your normal tradition to join with us in this way. I know that all of the viewers and listeners that are watching are really appreciating and joining in prayer and learning a lot about protocol. Thank you for teaching me and for being one of my most precious sisters and you too Michelani. thank you so i just wanted to say again thank you to everybody at disclosure fest for um opening your spirits your hearts your minds um seeing the way that um first nations people of the lands do things and that are still and have still have been doing their traditions forever like us at mauna kea and on the Hawaiian Islands, as well as on Turtle Island, there's many ceremonies that have been going on since the beginning of time. And um, prayer is just who we are as indigenous people of the lands. And again, I say that everybody's indigenous to their ancestral homelands. And um, I want to just give a shout out to many people who have been friending me on Facebook. Mahalo. Um, I thank you guys. Come and join us at United in Aloha um, Social Mount of Prayers. We've been doing, we started it yesterday and it's going to go into April 12th. Just jump in and put your folks um, seeing messages. Okay. <laughs> um, so I, you know, come and join us and say your prayers. What I do is I take people virtually to their, um, we're taking you virtually to Mauna Kea as if you were approaching her. And then I open up with prayers at 12 o'clock noon time. And then you come in and bring in your prayers. I hope people can hear me. Can everybody hear me? Because I see messages coming up. I apologize. Um, so I've been doing this. I've been doing prayer feeds for over 520 days on Facebook, bringing people back into ceremony through live feeds since I traversed the world. So with that said, again, Again, thank you, um, Disclosure Fest, Adrian, Neil, Michelle, and everyone else who has come on since Tuesday to now, and many more people are going to continue to come on. 
So I would like to give my prayers up to Mauna Awa Kea always because in our, for us, Mauna Kea is our guide. She is our mama. She guides us. She protects us. She feeds us and she nourishes us in the, in the physical realm and in the spirit realm. Um, Elehi mai lao kaula i ke kahi e e he malama lama o ni i haua malihi e aha mali e pa kai nu vahila ke i nu mahila na hala o na we i ke kai no na we kahala. No puna kabahine, no kalua no ikila we ai, ai ua ike he ai, ke kawalo hava le mai la ka ua e, ka mauna o kali ukua ha. Iku aloha me ka mahalo, aloha aloha e e e e ka aloha vale mai la ka ua e ka mau na o ka liu kua ha. Iku aloha me ka mahalo. Aloha, aloha, yeah. And again, we thank you, Mauna Wakea. We thank you, Kia Kua Nakua Naku Puna Nau Makua and our Kahiko ones. Mahalo, Eo, Aho, and O. Oh. Over to you, sister. Thank you, my sister. That was beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to just offer this healing prayer to close out. Um, it's a song and it was brought to me through ancestor, through spirit. Um, and so I sing it and I ask for prayers for all of those who are sick, for all of those who are dealing, whether it's this virus or pneumonia or cancer or diabetes and all these other illnesses that are affecting our peoples, as well as the, the illnesses that are affecting our lands and our waters. Um, I just pray for everybody to heal at this time. I send so much love and light. Thank you, Tina Calderon of the Tongva Nation. Thank you, my sister. Thank you to Mikalani Young from our Hawaiian Kumu. 
Thank you, Jose Munoz and Shuni Giron, our Mayan day keepers. Thank you to Chief Phil Lane from the Dakota and Chickasaw Nations. Thank you to the Disclosure Fest team, Adrian Valera and the team at Disclosure Fest for putting on this live with Neil Gore, Neil Gore um, from Portal to Ascension. I'd also like to take a moment to thank our sponsors, Follow Your Heart, GT's Kombucha, Calafia Farms and Biomats.com. They helped fund our putting this, this whole program on and they're helping to sponsor Disclosure Fest Mass Meditation. And all of these live streams, we have live streams going on all the way through May the 6th. We have next week on Tuesday, it's every Tuesday and Wednesday, 2 to 4 p.m. And this coming Tuesday, we have Lava and Free Soul doing a meditation and a live performance. And Jimmy Church will be hosting that segment, if all of you know him from Fade to Black. We also have Amanda Sage. She's an amazing galactic goddess who does painting and art. And she's leading a training a workshop and a meditation 3 to 4 p.m. on Tuesday. On Wednesday the 8th, we have Jay Brave. He's doing a Remember Your Divine Nature offering. And we also have Robin Parrish and Atasia doing ecstatic dance. So it really does feel like we have entered into the new renaissance. We are ushering in a whole new paradigm. and. It is, it's so important to me and to all of us at the Disclosure Fest team that you join with us in heart and in presence and in intention to really calm the field and pray like we did today. Go in ceremony, go out in nature and know that this is going to pass and we are going to come back even greater, more in balance, more in harmony more in peace and joy and unity with each other and with the earth that we live upon, Gaia. So we also have many other live streams going on. Like I said, every Tuesday and Wednesday, 2 to 4 p.m., we have Kiyoshi, Maribai Devi, Adam Apollo, who is a galactic brother of mine, as well as Elijah Ray doing live performances and workshops. Stephen Greer, many of you may know Dr. Stephen Greer. He's doing a meditation and a movie. We have Dea Dova, who's from Australia and is a beautiful grid worker and singer. And she'll be on on April 22nd. That's a Wednesday. Neil, Neil Gar is doing Portal to Ascension Day on the 28th, which is Tuesday, April 28th, with a whole host of the Portal to Ascension presenters. We have Porangue with Ashley Klein coming on and doing a musical offering and Liquid Bloom. Um, so, so many heart-centered, beautiful souls joining together during this time on earth. And we appreciate that you, any of you who are seeing this live stream or seeing the video afterwards, if you feel it in your heart to donate to Disclosure Fest so that we can continue with our initiatives, the Feed Our Souls initiative, the Clean Air initiative, where we're partnered with the tree people, the, the, the Starseed initiative, the Air Every Elder initiative, all of these initiatives are funded through your donations and we appreciate you wherever you feel guided. Join Unify, join Grandma Live. There's lots of meditations going on for the rest of the day. We invite you to go into four minutes of silence at 444 today, Pacific time. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being live with us today and sharing in ceremony with our star ancestors. And we hope to see you at Disclosure Fest Live on June 20th this year at Los Angeles State Historic Park. Just go to the DisclosureFest.org website and you'll find more details and information there. Hope to see you back on Tuesday, 2 p.m. Thank you again. I'm Michelle Anderson from Awakening Code Radio. You can find our radio program on iTunes. And I look forward to joining back with you on Tuesday again.
Thank you so much for your service to all life.